this is why people are frustrated with tests. All of these things are contradictions. So not, they can't all be true at the same time, which means somewhere in the story, something is a lie. The shirt kind of looks like the blanket hoodie, but I promise it's not the blanket hoodie. It's actually like a Valentine's Day shirt that I love. So we're, we're going places. I have escaped the blanket hoodie phase of recovery. Every time, every time I sit down to film, it's like, it's like they know these upstairs neighbors. They're like, what are you, what are you doing down there? Can we disrupt you? <sighs> I will say though, I did finally meet her and um, I think she's just a chronically loud old lady. Like, you know, the old ladies who always talk like they're yelling, like that is her entire MO. She's really awesome, except for she's literally almost burned our entire apartment complex down like three times. And she's only lived here for like a month, so I'm gonna need her to calm down. But anyway, if you can hear that, I am so sorry. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sam. If you're not new to the channel and you keep coming back week after week, thank you. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you are new here and this is the first time you are seeing my face, welcome. I make weekly videos dissecting internet nonsense, so if you're into that type of thing or you like today's video, I hope that you'll consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out the channel and it makes sure that you never miss another upload from me. Today, we are going to be talking about none other than, drumroll please, Tess Holiday. Because Tess popped up on my For You page once again, where she was doing a Today interview talking about her eating disorder. And my Tess Holiday videos tend to be my most watched videos on my channel. And if Tess can keep going out and peddling this same lie and making money off of it, well, I'm here to match that energy, making money, letting people know that she is lying to her audience one way or another. Because every single time she does one of these interviews and peddles this sort of myth, I guess I'll call it, she gains a little bit more of a following. So, um, might get a little interesting up in here. Without further ado, let's start with the TikTok that dropped me straight back into the Tess Holiday rabbit hole. Take a look. I get this comment a lot. Anytime I publicly talk about my ED and you don't have to believe me, but do you really think that the medical community and nutritionists and all of the experts that they interview when they also interview me that agree with me, do you think that they're all lying? So just remember how absolutely batshit crazy you sound saying this because I'm right, you're wrong. <laughs> now, this TikTok caught my attention because it let me know immediately that Tess is back out on the media trail peddling this information about her restrictive eating disorder. Um, and we'll just refer to it as that. Um, I'll put it on the screen here, but a girl ain't trying to get demonetized. So we'll never say it actually out loud, she is claiming to have a restrictive eating disorder. So anyway, she made it clear that she was back out there on the media trail, peddling this story, talking about restrictive eating disorders and body size and how you can't tell what kind of eating disorder someone has based on the size of their body. So of course, I scrolled through her TikTok page and I found out that she had done another interview and she posted the interview on her TikTok in two parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and show those two parts. I'm gonna clip um, so you're only getting the most important pieces, but I am gonna put them together and then we will unpack it after you've seen the interview. Take a look here. Tess Holliday has battled with her body image and relationship to food for decades. Last week was the first time that I have ever passed out from not feeding myself and it was scary. 
Tess Holliday is brutally honest about having setbacks. The 37-year-old has had many in the years since she was diagnosed with atypical anorexia nervosa, an eating disorder that shares all the same symptoms as anorexia, except extreme thinness. When her therapist implored her to seek help, Holiday was resistant. She said, listen, I can't diagnose you, but if I could, I would diagnose you as anorexia nervosa. And I remember thinking, I thought you were a professional. <laughs> like, don't you see the size of me? Even after seeking help from a medical professional, the mother of two was in disbelief. And that skepticism was shared by others around her. When Holiday shared the news with her millions of followers, the backlash was instantaneous. Do you feel like people who have what we've come to know as anorexia or what we believe is anorexia doubt you, doubt the diagnosis? There are a lot of people that feel offended that I would even suggest that I'm fat and that I have a restrictive eating disorder. Many of us associate small with healthy and large with unhealthy, but eating disorders don't discriminate by body size. Anorexia is a psychological disorder, and many people in larger bodies, like Tess, suffer from the same obsessions and anxieties around meals, body image, and weight gain. We can't possibly know what kind of eating disorder someone has by the size of their body. Dr. Sam DeCaro of the Renfrew Center says the vast majority of people suffering from eating disorders don't look sick or underweight. Says all patients with eating disorders, including atypical, are at risk of high blood pressure, irregular menstruation, and cardiac and cognitive issues. When people look at larger bodied individuals, they would see us as less than, and we're not less than. Holiday is thankful she found the resources she needed to get help and urges others to do the same. Health is not a moral compass. I am a fantastic mother. I'm great at my job. I'm loving and kind and compassionate and funny. <laughs> I'm so many things other than my size. Do you see what I mean? There is so much to unpack from this interview. But I'm curious, was there anything that caught you that made you want to just go to the comment section and furiously type something? Because for me, it was the inconsistency of her story on how she got her diagnosis for her restrictive eating disorder. Because this is a story that we have talked about on my channel. Because when Tess did her first media run, coming out with her restrictive eating disorder, um, talking specifically about this eating disorder, she said that her dietitian said, I'm not licensed to diagnose you, but if I was, I would diagnose you with this. Now, this is what this clip said. When her therapist implored her to seek help, Holiday was resistant. She said, listen, I can't diagnose you, but if I could, I would diagnose you as anorexia nervosa. Her therapist told her, I'm not licensed to diagnose you, but if I was. Do you see the little marked inconsistency? It's these inconsistencies that make her story even harder to believe than it already is. The story is never the same. Every time it goes out on the media trail, just like this, it changes just a little bit. Because like I said, that first time we were talking about her dietitian Anna Sweeney, who I've also talked about on the channel. But this time we're talking about some random therapist. So there's that. And I'm sure there are some test apologists out there who are like, but the media person said therapist, couldn't they have gotten it wrong? Sure, like of course they could have, but either way, the person who helped Tess get her diagnosis literally said, I am not licensed to diagnose you, and then immediately peddled her to a specialist that agreed with her. So is it a real diagnosis or is it not? Plus, there's the added inconsistency that she went from claiming having this restrictive eating disorder, and she leaned in very heavily to that when the first go-round happened, and now she's leaning into this. Take a look at this clip. 
you feel like people who have what we've come to know as anorexia or what we believe is anorexia doubt you, doubt the diagnosis? There are a lot of people that feel offended that I would even suggest that I'm fat and that I have a restrictive eating disorder. Let's take a moment together to comprehend all that just happened. Okay. Is anyone feeling the same way that I am feeling? I do not think for a second that people are offended that Tess Holliday is fat and claiming to have a restrictive eating disorder. I think people are frustrated that you are claiming to have a restrictive eating disorder while posting content on your TikTok and your other platforms of you eating a metric shit ton of food. Let me show you what I mean. Are you going to tell people that you have a restrictive eating disorder and post content like that? That it just doesn't make sense and that is why people are angry and that is why people are frustrated. Your story is inconsistent and for someone who is supposed to be afraid of gaining weight, afraid of eating in front of other people, there are other things that go along with the restrictive eating disorder she's claiming to be diagnosed with and she's doing the opposite of that on her very public platform. She has a lot, a lot of followers and people who suffer with restrictive eating disorders like this don't typically eat like that, especially not on camera. And that is why a lot of people are struggling with you. They don't think that you're telling the truth. It's also very clear that Tess has lied to her audience and she has a history of lying to her audience. Actually, if you're interested, after you watch my video, <laughs> Megan Ann did a really good video on her channel talking about Tess's four um, big scams that she was a part of. But all of that aside, Tess is known for lying to her audience. She waved the Health at Every Size banner, hitting it big with a Cosmo cover shoot, including an article called Strong, Fit, and 300 Pounds. She championed this movement, telling people that they could have health no matter their size and still arguing to this day that you cannot tell by someone's body size what kind of eating disorder they have. Think about what I just said for a minute longer. She is telling people that they can have health at any size. She is telling people she is 300 pounds fit and strong, or she was 300 pounds when she did the cover of um, Cosmo, while also telling people she has one of the most dangerous psychological disorders, this restrictive eating disorder. In 2020, psychiatry and psychologists' organizations were reporting that eating disorders were amongst the deadliest mental health conditions. How is it possible to be fit and healthy at 300 pounds, but also have an eating disorder? This is why people are frustrated with tests. All of these things are contradictions, so not they can't all be true at the same time. 
which means somewhere in the story something is a lie. Now I want to go back and touch on the original TikTok that I saw where she was basically asking, well, you're saying that I'm lying, but what about the professionals that they interview alongside of me? Are they lying? Because basically they're saying that I'm right and you're wrong, neen or neen. As I do, I looked up Dr. Sam DeCaro, who was featured here. Dr. Sam DeCaro is the professional that tests ask the commenter if they were also thought was lying. If you Google Dr. DeCaro, she is a PhD doctor and doesn't appear to have fallen into the health at every size rabbit hole. Many of her posts are actually focused on assisting people to escape from their eating disorders. But what I find particularly interesting is Tess saying that this doctor is basically proving her right. But if you watch the interview, that's not actually true. They just randomly clip her in saying things like this. We can't possibly know what kind of eating disorder someone has by the size of their body. Or this. I think there's a misconception that if you have fat on your body, that somehow you will be protected from the medical issues of starving yourself. This doctor doesn't know Tess, and they never appear on screen together. This wasn't an interview that was likely conducted together. It was two separate interviews that they piecemealed to make this piece of news, I guess we'll call it. So, again, this doctor is not agreeing with Tess. So that means this doctor was just saying, yeah, no, you can't tell if someone has a restrictive eating disorder based on their body type. That doesn't mean they're agreeing that Tess has a restrictive eating disorder. And maybe because they don't know Tess, they don't know that she posts videos of herself consuming massive quantities of food, right? So again, they're not necessarily agreeing or disagreeing. And I'll just point out, once again, that Tess flying the flag of health at every size, but then agreeing with this doctor who said that patients who deal with restrictive eating disorders have higher risk of like heart disease um, and other things like that. How are you agreeing with them if you're supposedly healthy? Because if you were healthy, you wouldn't have a higher risk. Do you see what I mean here? Like, it's a lot of mental gymnastics. I hope y'all stretched your brains today before you came to watch the video. Like, the math just isn't mathing, and that is why I struggle to believe anything that Tess is saying based upon the fact that she has a history of lying and based on the things that she posts. That's where I struggle. Something is a lie. It really isn't rocket science. And I just, I have to share this next part because I laughed out loud. Like the editing is just like so low key shady because they're like, now Tess is also telling people how they can find resources. And then it clips to Tess and she's just like talking about herself in this awkward way. You, I'll just let you see it. Holiday is thankful she found the resources she needed to get help and urges others to do the same. Health is not a moral compass. I am a fantastic mother. I'm great at my job. I'm loving and kind and compassionate and funny. <laughs> I'm so many things other than my size. <laughs> like, do you see what I mean? She wasn't telling anybody how they could find resources. She was literally blowing up her own ego and talking about how funny she is. I just, it's always interesting when someone calls themselves funny and then immediately laughs at it. Am I wrong? You guys will have to tell me what you think below, but that was just, it was too much for me. There are plenty of fat creators who have thriving online platforms. I mean, it's totally possible to do by simply not gaslighting and manipulating and lying to your audience. Maybe some self-reflection could really help out creators like Tess, Amberlynn, Fat Doctor UK, like other people who have generally negative platforms. There's a reason that the platform is negative. Just gonna throw out a little hint. It often has to do with the creator, but you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> Don't know why that's so hard for people to put together. Anyway, that is all I have for you guys today. Did you see this Tess Holiday interview on today? What do you think about Tess in general, I think is what I'm most interested in. 
I only just recently also stumbled across a post um, actually on the plus size subreddit asking people, plus size people, who are generally positive what they think about Tess Holiday, and oof, I, I was actually unprepared for how negative their answers were. Like a lot of people just straight up said like, hate, which made me think of Jim Carrey and the Grinch. Hate, 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 double hate, loathe entirely. I, again, I just wasn't prepared. Okay. Now I'm rambling, so let's wrap this video. Thank you so, so much for being here with me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.